Hello everyone and welcome back to something called the Java math class. Okay, so the Java math class contains several methods that will allow us to perform mathematical tasks with numbers. So there's many methods, but I'll explain five that each allow us to do a specific task with these numbers. So the first things first is the math.max method. So let me go ahead and backtrack before we start on the math.max method. So um, first, we have something called the Java math class. So what this does is that it's going to um, it's going to contain several methods. All these methods start with something I like to call a branch. This branch is called math with the capital M. So you go math and then dot and then whatever it is you're trying to find. So if you're trying to find the uh, square root, then you say math.sqrt. If you're trying to find the minimum, then math.min. So it's something like that. All these um, methods, the code is all similar. It all follows the same format. And essentially, it it's the same kind of, um, it's the same format. So if you can follow that format, then you'll be able to easily understand. So um, there's many methods. I'll explain five. So they each allow us to do a specific task with these numbers. Like, for example, find the maximum between the numbers, find the minimum between the numbers, and so on and so forth. So now let me go ahead and start with something called the math.max method. What this is going to do is that it's going to allow us to find the highest value between the two numbers. These numbers are denoted as x and y, and x and y can either be decimals or they can be positive or negative numbers. Um, the x and y are known as parameters. Parameters are what you pass into the method. We'll learn more about parameters when we actually get into methods. This is just something about the math class, which contains math methods. So think of it as a little like um, sneak peek before we get into the methods. So let's go ahead and set up our file. Public class. So first we need to... By the way, if you, ha if you included a package in your um, code, then make sure you include that. And then now we can get started. It's also good to name your file um, based on what you're doing. So if you're doing, uh, if you're trying to do the math methods, then name the file that, but I didn't do that. So it's okay, you don't have to do it. It's just good and it's good to get into the habit of doing that. But I'm just gonna use the same file as last video just cause. Okay, and then let's go ahead and By the way, this is all syntax. Um, this was all in the first video, so um, if you are, if you can go ahead and check out the first video, I'll have it at the end of the video. Um, I also have the playlist as well, so you can go ahead and watch through all of those. But I explained all this in the first video, so um, go ahead and check that out if you if you're not sure what this is right here. But this is in pretty much every Java file. Okay, then what we can do is that since the data type is void, meaning that there is no return value, what we can simply do is that we can add a system.out.println statement. After that, we need to include our math method. Math.max in this case. Um, I want to do a double. It can pretty much be anything. I'm going to do a double because double is always the most precise. But I'll just go ahead and do 9 and 5. They're not decimals, but it's okay. It's fine by me. Oh, that's why. Okay, there we go. Now, let's run it. So what we did here is, since void has no return, um, we added a system.out.println value. Um, what this is good, what the println value is going to do, it's going to um, move the cursor to the next line. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so if you had like multiple numbers that were going to be printed into the terminal, um, the next number would be printed on the next um, line. It would be indented, if that makes sense. So it'd be like if you like like an enter, I guess like so nine would be here and then eight would be there. But we only have we're only um, displaying one number, so it doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and run this. So what we're trying to do once again is that we're trying to find the maximum between these two. And in this case, the maximum between the two is 9. So since 9, nine is bigger than 5, so it's going to print out 9. Because we're trying to find the maximum of the two, which one is bigger. The next thing is minimum. Minimum also requires two, um, two values, two numbers. 
Um, but minimum, it does the opposite. It finds which one is smaller between the two. And 5 is smaller than 9. So it's going to print out 5. So the next, the next method is something called square root. So by the way, that was already 2 out of 5. It's as simple as that. If you just know what these methods do, um, you can follow the format and you'll be able to get it done easy, quick, and simple. So next is the math.square root. So what this is going to do is that it will find the square root of a number. Keep in mind that it only requires um, math.square root only requires one parameter. So if I did two, then it's going to give me an error. So it only requires one parameter. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say 25. Don't change any of this up here. Only change um, what's inside the system.out.println. We're only changing the method inside it. So that's all that really matters. So let's go ahead and run it. And there we go. We have it 5.0. It's printing the 0.0 after because um, our end result is a double, not an integer. Um, it doesn't have to come out clean. It can be a um, it does it can be a non-perfect square number, so like 32, and then it's gonna print the whole thing. By the way, this is a double, so it's gonna stop at the it's gonna stop at the 16th value or the 15th value, whichever. I can't count today. Okay, so after that, we then have something called the absolute value, or it's denoted as math.abs. What math.abs is, that's going to print the absolute value for a number. Um, what this essentially is, is that it makes a number positive. So if the number's already positive, then you're just going to get the same value. However, if it's negative, then it's going to make the number positive. So just like that, 9.8. Just like um, square root, um, the absolute value only requires one parameter. So we did it. it. Only required one parameter. And then lastly is something called math.random. And this one is special. It doesn't require any parameters at all. So you just do math.random and then that's it. You run it and it will just print you a random number. It's pure random. It just prints you a random number. So that is all the five math, math methods. It was as simple as that, to be honest. Um, if you just know the format and you know what each of the five methods do, then you'll be good to go. Just to recap, the math.max method will print the maximum value of two numbers. Math.minimum will print the smaller number out of the two values. Um, math.sqrt or math.square root will tell us the square root of the number. It doesn't have to be a perfect square. It can be a non-perfect square as well. So it will just give you a long decimal ending in the 15th value because it will always stop at the 16th. And then after that, we have our absolute value, our dot abs. What that's going to do is that that's going to make a negative number positive. If it's already positive, then you're just going to get the same number. And then lastly, we have dot random, which is just going to print a random number whatsoever. It's going to print a random double, so it's going to print a random decimal. And that's pretty much it for this video. So if you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe. I did talk pretty fast, so if you have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.